Hello, everyone. It is October 1st. It is a Saturday, so that means it is Mechtober. This month, I have left most of Mechtober up to my patrons. If you wish to make a suggestion, join the Unicorn Company Patreon at patreon.com slash unicorn company. In this first installment, though, we will be looking at one of the big boys of Battletech, a mech that was designed around the concept of fear itself, the Atlas. The Atlas AS-7D was conceived by General Alexander Kerensky, who said he wanted, and I quote, a mech as powerful as possible, as impenetrable as possible, and as ugly and foreboding as conceivable, so that fear itself will be our ally. General Kerensky put forward his requirement in 2755 and got his wish shortly thereafter. The Atlas was designed to carry as much armor as a mech could and is capable of delivering a devastating amount of firepower at any range. The AS-70 Atlas, the one the general got, and which was used by the Star League Defense Force, is a 100-ton behemoth built around proven technologies with a standard chassis and a VLAR 300 engine. The same engine used in the vaunted Marauder, giving it, giving it a ground speed of around 54 kilometers an hour. The mech is armed with a mix of weapons which allow it to engage at any range with an LRM-20 to pepper an enemy with missiles until it can bring its massive Autocan-20 to bear. This is backed up by four medium lasers, two of which face to the rear for medium to close range engagements. The mech also has an SRM-6 launcher to exploit any open gaps in an enemy's armor. All of this is intended to be used in specific range bands, and the mech itself is cooled by 20 standard heat sinks. The fear part of the Atlas came in its visage. Not just wanting a normal cockpit, the Atlas was built with the famous Death's Head cockpit. And between its reputation and its looks, there have been incidents where an enemy has simply left the field due to the sight of an Atlas on the battlefield during the Succession Wars. Another advantage of the Death's Head cockpit is that the head of the mech is large enough to house a satellite dish and communications array that allows surface-to-space surface communications to coordinate with dropships and warships in orbit. The BV of the base model Atlas, in all its glory, is 1897. The Atlas, much like mechs from the Star League era, has seen a number of variants, and, would, and some would argue is superseded by successors like the Atlas II and III. So, we're going to take a look at each of these variants in turn. And it's a long list that has grown since I was first working on Sarna, when it just started out. We begin with the AS-7A. This version of the Atlas is a short-range monster. It has an LRM-10 and autocannon 5 for long-range and medium engagement with the enemy. It has five, that's right, five SRM-6 launchers in the right torso. The mech is otherwise identical to the 7Ds as far as, respect, as, far as armor and speed and would be a nightmare to face in an urban environment. The BV of the A is 1787. Next, we're going to look at the AS-7C, C, CM, and K. These three mechs are identical, except the C has one less medium pulse laser than the K to make room for the C3 slave, and the CM removes an ER large laser to make room for a C3 master computer. The AS-7K is an upgrade of the mech using recovered Starleak technology. The mech is powered by an extra light engine, freeing up room for far heavier and more advanced weapons payload. The mech is armed with an LRM-20 launcher and a left torso and a Gauss rifle in place of the Autocannon 20, making it extremely deadly at long range. It also carries a pair of ER large lasers, one mounted in each arm, and two rear-mounted medium pulse lasers, as well as an anti-missile system to defend itself. The downfall of this design is that it still uses single heat sinks, making it easy to overwhelm the cooling system. The AS-7K has a BV of 2175, the C, 2163, and the CM has a battle value of 2036. Next up is the AS-7DR. This is a refit of the mech that was introduced after the War to Blake Jihad. It replaces the Autocannon 20 of the D with a heavy PPC, upgrades the SRM-6 launcher to a streak model, and has a Guardian ECM suite, C3 slave, and two heat sinks. The mech has a battle value of 2101. There's also a command variant to the Atlas, the AS7D-DC. This mech uses the ample space in the head to add a command console for battlefield commanders so they can concentrate on coordinating a battle while someone else pilots the mech. 
This is done by removing a ton of ammunition for the, the LRM launcher, as well as the rear-facing medium lasers. The battle value of this command variant is 1858. The AS-7K2 is another post-Jihad variant. Based on the K variant, it was introduced to the, by the Larens in 3082. The mech is powered by a 300 extra light engine, allowing it to travel at speeds of almost 65 kilometers an hour. Sorry, that's a 400 extra light engine. It is armed with a Gauss rifle and the two ER large lasers of the K and adds two streak SRM 6 launchers. For added electronic warfare capabilities on the battlefield, it of its era, it also carries a Guardian ECM suite and has a battle value of 2,160. The K3 is a modification of the K2 that removes the two Streak 6 launchers, replacing them with three jump jets and a Streak SRM 4 launcher, making it very maneuverable in close quarters fighting. The K3 has a battle value of 2,346. The K-4 seems to me to be the K-2 on steroids. It replaces the entire armament with an ERPPC in each arm, an SRM-6 in each side torso, and a rotary autocannon in the left torso. It retains the speed and ECM suite of the K-2 and protects its ammunition with case to make it recoverable in the case of an ammo explosion. The BV of the K-4 is 2153. The last of the K series, as far as the 7K, is the K-DC. This variant is another command variant, removing one rear-mounted medium pulse laser and a ton of LRM ammo for a command console, and has a battle value of 2158. The next variant we are going to look at is the AS-7-RS. This variant is a Succession Wars variant based on the Atlas II, which was lost in the inner sphere at the time. The RS carries an autocannon 10, LRM-15, and SRM-4 in its torsos, and mounts a large laser in each arm, making it pretty good as far as an all-around mech in the Succession Wars era, if slow. It has a battle value of 1849. Next up is the S-Series. Excuse me, starting with the 7S. Um, it is a model that was introduced in 3050 by the Fedcom and removes five heat sinks but upgrades the remaining 15 to double heat sinks. It adds two rear facing Streak SRM2 launchers for more rearward protection as though it needed it. The battle value of the 7S is 1929. The S2 is an upgrade by the Laren Alliance in 3061. It is powered by a light fusion engine and has an LRM15 launcher mated to an Artemis IV fire control system. The mech has a pair of ER large lasers for primary long-range damage with a heavy Gauss rifle for immense, immense close-range capabilities. The mech does have an ECM suite to help disrupt enemy C3 networks and advanced missile targeting systems. The battle value of the S2 is 2389. The S3 is a rearmament re program of the S2 or essentially a service life extension, and replaces the heavy Gauss rifle with a standard Gauss rifle, and also swaps out the ER large lasers for a PPC and small laser in each arm. An additional small laser is placed in the head, and an anti-missile system is mounted to help protect it from missile barrages. The mech does not keep the Artemis Enhanced LRM-15 in the ECM suite of the S2, and has a battle value of 2378. Next is the S3DC, which removes the small lasers in ECM of the S3 for command console. Identical battle value to the S3 of 2378. The last of the 7 series, the uh, Atlas is at least, is the S4, which was a cutting edge version of the Atlas, mounting stealth armor on the S3. It upgrades the PPCs to extended range versions, but has to sacrifice the small lasers, anti-missile system, and long range missile launcher in the trade. It does add two torso mounted medium X pulse lasers though, and adds three double heat sinks deal with the higher heat caused by the stealth armor system. The battle value of this cutting edge behemoth is 2568. The AS-8D was released in 3074 and entered full production after the Jihad. The mech carries a light PPC in each of its arms and has two torso mounted MML-9 launchers, allowing it to have long and short range missile capabilities with one type of launcher. It also carries a rotary autocannon 5, a snub nose PPC, and three small lasers, two ER and one standard, for short range capabilities. It is cooled by 14 double heat sinks, and instead of using a large, larger engine to get the extra speed, it uses triple strength MIMR. The battle value of the 8D is 2059. 
The next 8 Series Atlas is the 8K. This model is built around an extra light engine, making it more fragile than a standard engine Atlas. It attempts to compensate by using a heavy duty gyro, as well as being clad in ballistic reinforced armor. It carries a Gauss rifle and MML5 for long range engagements. The MML5 also works to help in shorter range brackets with a Streak SRM6 launcher as well. The mech does have the classic Corita ER large laser in each arm and has two rear mounted ER medium lasers to protect it from would be backstabbers with a battle value of 28, or sorry, 2668. The 8KE is an export version of the 8K that down, that quote unquote downgrades the engine to a standard version and has terms of the Street 6 launcher. The rear firing lasers and double heat sink. Battle value of the AKE is 2658, and I would argue it is actually an upgrade because of the fact that it's harder to kill. The 8S is a Liren variant and uses a mix of plan and inner sphere technology. It has an improved heavy Gauss rifle as its primary weapon and mounts a pair of plan ER large lasers, one in each arm. These are backed up by an LRM-5 and SRM-6 launcher in the torso for long and short range work respectively. It also mounts a compact gyro to help make room for the massive improved heavy Gauss rifle and is cooled by 16 double heat sinks. The battle value of the 8S is 2789. Now the clans, not to be outdone, made a few variants of their own. They are the C, C2, and C3. The C is a simple swap of the auto cannon, LRM launcher, and SRM-6 for an Ultra AC-20, Clan RM-20, and Streak SRM-6. The standard lasers and single heat sinks are retained in this refit, which has a battle value of 2306. The C-2 is an even more extensive refit, carrying an LB-20X auto cannon, an ERPBC in place of the LRM launcher, and two medium pulse lasers. The rear firing lasers are removed, and the arm lasers are upgraded to ER large lasers. The mech has 20 double heat sinks and a value of 20, battle value of 2736. Finally, the C-3 is something of an oddity. It carries a Gauss rifle in its right torso with an ER large laser in each arm. For a missile system, it mounts the Arrow 4 missile artillery system in its torso. It is cooled by 17 double heat sinks and has a battle value of 2606. Now, while I'm not going to go into all the variants used by personalities, it was all, one that I do want to talk about is that it was always rumored that Warlord Samsonov had to pilot one because of his weight. And it was the only mech that he would actually fit inside of. His configuration is interesting. He retained the auto cannon, but everything else was swapped out for a pair of arm-mounted PPCs and six additional heat sinks. His personal ride is a battle value of 1884. So let's take a look at the mechanism as it appears in Alpha Strike. The AS7 Atlas is the baseline and the mech conceptualized by Kerensky. The mech is type battle mech, size 4, TMM1 with a move of 6, the juggernaut and its stat line lives up to this, with a short and medium of 5 and long of 2 with no overheat. It has armor of 10 and structure of 8 with the specials of AC22, nil, indirect fire 1, LRM111, rear 11 nil, and has a point value of 52. The AS7A is an interesting beast in Alpha Strike. It is the same base stat line, battle mech size 4, TMM1, movement of 6. It's also a juggernaut. has a short medium of 5 with a long of 2. And an overheat of 2, actually. It has armor and structure of 10 and 8, respectively, and has specials of SRM-33 and indirect fire 1. If using special munitions, it makes this model a monster when it is allowed to use either tandem charge or inferno ammunition. The battle value of the 7A is 53. Next, we're going to look at the C, CM, and K models together due to their similarity. The K is one is the one the other two are based off of. It is battle mech size 4, TMM1, with movement of 6, classified as a sniper and does 3 damage in all range brackets. Mech has an overheat of 2 with armor of 10, structure of 4. It has specials of anti-missile system, case, indirect fire 1, Overheat long, rear 1-1-0, one, one, and comes in at 45 points, which isn't bad, actually. The 7C is almost identical, except it has damage values of 3 at short, 4 medium, and an overheat of 1. For specials, it carries an anti-missile system, C3 slave, case indirect fire 1, mech headquarter 1, overheat long, and rear 1-1-0 one, one, at 51 points. 
The CM variant has the same profile as the C with velocity overheat ability, but gains the C3M and TAG special abilities for a cost of 54. Now we have the Atlas AS7DR. This variant is type battle mech size 4 with a target move of 1 and movement of 6 again. Its damage values are, sh are uh, 3 at short and long with 4 at medium and overheat of 1. It has armor of 10, structure of 8 with specials of C3 slave, ECM, indirect fire 1, mech headquarter 1, and rear 1 1 0. Um, the next uh, variant of the D is the D DC. Or D AS70. Um, it is battle mech size 4, TMM1 with move of 6, and is a juggernaut. It has attack values of 5 at short and medium with a long of 1, no overheat, <clears throat> is protected by 10 armor and 8 structure, and has specials of AC22, indirect fire 1, mech headquarter 1 with a point value of 52. After that, we get into the K2 and further. The K2 is type battle mech size 4, TMM1 with movement of 8, and a sniper. The mech is short and medium of four with a long of three and overheat at two. It is armor protection of armor protection of ten and structure of four, making it pretty fragile with specials of case, ECM, and overheat long, and comes in at 49 points. The K3 adds six jump to the design and does damage of three at all ranges with an overheat of one. It has the same armor structure and specials as the K2 for 49. The K4 is classified as a brawler. It has short and medium of 4 with a long of 2 and no overheat. It has the same armor and structure as the K2. It has specials of case, ECM, SR11 with a point value of 47. The AS7RS, which yearns to be an Atlas II, is battle mech size 4, TMM1, movement of 6. It does 3 at short, 4 at medium where it works best, and 1 at long with no overheat. It has armor of 10, structure of 8 with sing with the single special of indirect fire and it's a point cost of 48. <clears throat> Next we get into the 7S. The first of these is classified as a juggernaut, which is size 4, TMM1, movement of 6. It does 5-inch five, five short, medium, with long of 2, no overheat. Once again, it has armor of 10, structure of 8, and it has specials of AC22, indirect fire 1, LRM111, rear 220, and comes in at a total of 52 points. The S2 is a sniper and has an identical base stat line to the 7S. It does damage of 4 at short and long with 5 at medium. Uh, once again, having that nice sweet spot there. And no overheat value. The S2 has armor protection of 10 with structure of 5 and has specials of case, ECM, indirect fire 1, and a point value of 51 points. The S3 is a sniper again. Oh, with the same base profile as 7S and S2. Has damage output of 5 at all ranges, though with no overheat. Has the same armor and structure of the S2, while adding the special of AMS to its profile. The S3 has a point value of 54. <clears throat> it is followed on by the S3DC, which is identical to the S3 with a couple exceptions. Has damage of 4 at short range, and adds mech headquarter to its specials for a drop in 2 points. The last of the 7S series is the S4. This machine is a bit of a zombie, being type battle mech size 4 TMM1 with 6 move. It does 4 at all ranges with an overheat of 1, armor of 10, structure of 8, has the specials of case 2, ECM, and also has stealth, making it the hardest atlas to hit at 55 points. We come up to the AS8 series. Next, uh, the first of these is the D. The mo this model is battle mech size 4, TMM1 movement is 6. It's classified as a juggernaut and is reminiscent of the 7D and Alpha Strike. Does 5 at short and medium with a long of 2 and overheat of 1. It has 10 armor, 8 structure, with specials of case, indirect fire 1, and triple strength minor. This variant comes in at 54 points. The second of these is the 8K. The 8K is type battle mech size 4, TMM1, movement of 6, classified as a juggernaut again. The mech does damage of 5 at short medium with a long of 4 and no overheat. The 8K has armor of 10 with structure of 4 and has specials of ballistic resistant armor, case 2, 
indirect fire zero with the star so you can possibly get lucky with that and rear one one nil for 51. the export version of the ak the AKE seems to be the scarier of these two in my opinion once again, it's Battle Mech, size 4, TMM1, movement is 6, and classified as a juggernaut. It does 4 damage at all range brackets with no overheat values, has armor of 10, structure of 8, still has ballistic resistant armor, still has case 2, and has indirect fire 0 with the star, making it a little bit more resilient for the cost of uh, 53 points. Finally, as far as inner sphere production variants, we have the 8S. This model is tight battle mech size 4, target move 1, movement of 6. <clears throat> it is classified as a sniper and does 6 at short and medium ranges with 5 at long and no overheat. The 8S has 10 armor, 5 structure, and has specials of case 2, ECM, indirect fire with a little start with the asterisk, so you might get lucky and actually do a damage, and rear 1-1-0, one, one, coming in at 56 points. Ah, the last of the Atlas variants are the Cs. Um, the first of these is the Atlas C. It's a Pike Battle Mech, size 4, TMM1, movement of 6, and is classified as a Juggernaut. It does 5 in short, medium, long of 2, and has an overheat of 2. It has armor of 10, structure of 8, with specials of indirect fire 1, rear 1, 1 nil, and a point value of 53. The C2 cranks the knob up to 11 on the clan refit of the Atlas and Alpha Strike with the same baseline stats as the C. It does 6 at short and medium with a long of 4 and an overheated 2. C2 has armor of 10, structure of 8, the specials of case, flak 1 1 nil, and the C2 has a point value of 57. The C3, on the other hand, takes the Atlas, crosses all the wires, and does something weird. At 62 points, it has the same base as the other C variants, but is classified as a sniper. It loses some damage output at four at every range bracket, but no overheat. It has pretty standard armor and structure of 10 and 8 respectively, and has specials of Art AC-1 and Case, which is why it has the high price tag. It is literally the Atlas that can reach out and touch anything on the table. In Alpha Strike, it makes a very good zombie mech in some configurations. Then again, some of its configs are just downright weird. Some of the upgrades in Classic are downgrades to Alpha Strike, and of course the Clanners decided it would make good mobile artillery platform, much to the dismay of whoever gets to pilot the thing, at least as far as Clan Warriors are concerned. I'm sure the Inner Sphere Warriors would love it because they don't have to be on the front line. So that has been this week's installment of Mechtober. I will be releasing exclusive card cards to my patrons on Patreon in digital format for all the configurations talked about here. You know, actually, one more thing before I go. Um, the Samsonov variant, the AS7-WGS, um, has the same base stat line as a 7D, does four at short, four at medium, two at long, doesn't overheat, has a standard 10-8 armor structure separation, and has special ability in AC-220. That one, and maybe more of the, uh, what am I thinking of? Oh, the, the personal variants. We released these off strike cards to my patrons. Um, that is it for today. If you like this, if you want to get involved, go to Unicorn Company, uh, go patreon.com slash unicorn company. Also, Feel free to visit our sponsor, um, who sponsors all of our mech techs, including the Mechtober series. That would be Mift Kitty Minis at miftkittyminis.bigcartel.com. Until next time, this is Unicorn Actual signing off. <laughs>